Let's return now to the story we began the program with tonight, EQC and the increasing number of issues it's dealing with regarding botched repairs. Or, And this is what we've been looking at on Checkpoint over the past few nights, repairs that weren't done because the first EQC scopes after the earthquakes didn't notice the damage, often to foundations beneath floors that people doing the scopes hadn't looked under. We've spoken to people who bought property, sold a sound on the basis of EQC repairs, but neither the vendor nor the purchaser knew the scoping process had missed serious damage. Last night we heard from the former Fletcher Construction CEO who signed the contract with EQC which put Fletcher's in charge of the rebuild program. Mark Binns told us some of the early EQC scopes were done too quickly and by people not qualified to do them. Tonight we heard from a works manager involved in the rebuild for four years from the beginning of 2011 who said that even when they knew damage uh, had just been found, so missed in the scopes but found by contractors, it was sometimes hard to get scopes changed. All of this is emerging in more and more detail seven years after the major earthquake. I spoke to the Minister for Greater Christchurch Regeneration, Megan Woods, shortly before we came on air. What is clear and uh, something that John isn't a surprise to me and it wouldn't be a surprise to anyone to know that I thought it that there were some problems at the beginning of this um, how the jobs were scoped up the initial assessments but what I'm really focused on now is working with Sid Miller and working with the new interim chair and putting a plan in place to actually get these final claims settled there's two and a half thousand people and families out there that can't get on with their lives and that's my absolute focus and in all cases, they are not dealing with EQC or their insurer for the first time, are they? This is remedial stuff. This is return visits. That's right. Um, the, um, the more than half of those um, 2,600 are, are re-repairs. There's a variety of categories in there, but a lot of these are the repairs that, we, that, we, that failed. Re-repairs are something of a misnomer, isn't it? Because, in fact, what we're learning is that many of the repairs simply weren't done. So there was cosmetic work done, cracks in the walls plastered over, paint done, chimneys repaired. But actually what a lot of these homes are confronting is structural damage beneath the floor. And this is the first time in many cases these homeowners knew they had that structural damage. That's right, that re-repairs is a bit of a catch-all phrase for something that's much broader than um, uh, something that's got to go back and be re-repaired again. As you say, that it is work that was initially missed. So um, it's a word that covers a very broad range of things that EQC needs to look at. The work was initially missed, inevitably work was going to be initially missed when 182,000 rapid assessments, scopes in other words, were done in the period of four months after those February quakes. But what we are learning now is that after that, as contractors went in and found that the scopes had missed damage, it was very hard to get a variation to the scopes. In other words, whistleblowing was taking place but not always being listened to. Look, and I know as a local MP that was working with constituents coming in that often it was people wanting to have their scope of work re-looked at. But what the, what I'm concentrating on now with the work that um, Anita is uh, working on and Sid Miller is working through is how to get these claims settled. What our independent inquiry into EQC will go back and look at what happened and how we can do that better in the future. I think one of the things that everybody down here in Canterbury wants to ensure is that we learn from what we went through and that... Um, when um, or if another community in New Zealand has to go through this again, that we can do it better. Because I think everyone would agree um, that there's, there's things that, um, that we can do better and we need to learn from what we did well and what went wrong. What is your understanding of what went wrong now? What, and I know you, uh, the inquiry hasn't happened, you only have a new chair, uh, you've only been the minister for a short time, but what do you think went most wrong? Look, John, I've talked to you about some of those things before. I think that we can um, take it back to some of the scopes of work that were, were done. The fact that actually this was a huge um, task for an organisation um, that was only a few people that had to scale up and do it. But that's kind of my hunch, um, and that's the anecdotes and the kinds of things that I think that everybody in Canterbury has an opinion around some of those things. But it's precisely the reason why I want to do the work of having an independent inquiry. So we can have a systematic look at this, and it's not just people's hunches. Um, and what people suspect. But we can properly learn from this and we can make the changes that we need to make, whether that's um, to the legislation or the plan around how we prepare for readiness in the future. 
Are you surprised EQC indemnified Fletcher's, and I quote, for all costs and expenses FCC may suffer and for any claims made against FCC? Well, look, this was um, the, the, I, the story around the indemnity of, Fle of Fletcher's and that, that occurred in their contract um, was something that was being talked about for a number of years. I think the press were doing stories on it back in 2015, um, that it was something that was out there. Um, that I think that Fletcher's um, didn't want to carry the risk, and the last government indemnified them against that. So what we have now um, is an issue that we have to work through of how it is that we can um, get through and get people's houses repaired, because that has to be my primary focus. At no cost to the homeowners who, after seven years, are still waiting for these repairs to be done? Oh, look, this has to be um, that, that people are still waiting for their repairs to be to done properly and what they're entitled to under the Act. And that's what I've always said, that this is about the fair and swift settlement of claims. This is what people are, you know, they're, they're, what they are fairly entitled to under our legislation. And that is my focus, is making sure that they do get those repairs done. Megan Woods, uh, people have been hearing some of that stuff for seven years now. We are going to keep an eye on progress here and we are looking in depth at that contract which we've obtained exclusively between FCC, Fletcher Construction and EQC.